Um, all I have to do is just to put it into water, and you'll see the first thing about the heart. The first thing about this form is that it creates a vortex. This start, is it starting yet? I can't see. The vortex starting? Yes. Okay. So what happens is that there is a circle at the top of the form uh, that the vortex tries to go in between. You see it trying to get through there? And you can see that it is difficult for it to go all the way down, and the reason it is is because the circle at the top is spinning. So some people are saying that the heart is irregulated. That's no proof. This is showing that the circle that's spinning in the top will not allow the vortex to go all the way down, and I'll show you what happens when it tries to go down too far. You see it start to spin off at the top? Look when I go faster, what happens? See that? It spins off the top. So that means that this circle here that's created when I spin it, see the circle? That doesn't allow the vortex to go down any deeper than about here. Now one of the things they don't understand about the heart is why is the tip of the heart, which I'll get this going again, why is the tip of the heart, which is called apex, paper thin? The thing is three thirty seconds of an inch thick. You get the walls like that, very thick. So if this was a pump, okay, that would blow out, just like an inner tube. At the end of the pressure that this has to go, this would blow right out. And the reason it doesn't blow out is it doesn't have to be very thick, because the vortex can't get down there. The vortex, the blood coming in, okay, from the lungs, cannot get all the way down, so it doesn't have to be thick. But the outside has to be thick because the, the muscles are not trying to push the blood out, they're trying to keep it in. The thickness of the muscle is trying to keep the blood in because every time the heart beats, 50% of the blood is always in the heart. Always stays behind. 50% goes out the aorta. 50% 50 stays behind. And at the top here, there is suction. <coughs> And according to the research, it's up to 10 G's. That means if you put your hand over the bathtub, that is 1 G. Gravity. 1 gravity. It's 10 forces of gravity at the top of the heart. You can imagine how fast that blood must be sucked out of there. Not pumped, but sucked out. Not pressure, but suction. The heart doesn't work on pressure. Everybody says, well, you have blood pressure. I can touch my, you can feel my blood pressure. That's because the momentum of the blood is being stopped. Okay, less than one second all the time. So it goes like this, comes to a, goes to an artery, and it, it goes in less than one second, it hits a little dam, and kind of reverses, and then goes a little further, and reverses, and that reversing <coughs> is pressure. But what's moving it is suction. Okay, so... Um, if I, if I, creating the suction? Okay. <coughs> creating the suction? Uh, creating the suction? What's creating the suction? Yeah. I'm getting ahead here. Um, okay. The, what's creating the suction? That's all right. That's all right. Don't get ahead. <laughs> I mean, I'll answer it. I, I have an answer. Keep going. Idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, here's another thing about the heart. This is the volume, and I found this out, but this is the volume of the blood in the left ventricle. And this is the plunger that I can push the blood out until it's empty. All right. So they've done experiments with this by putting this on a big block of cement with four legs. And they had a, a two by four, eight feet high, and they bring this two by four out to the back at about 45 degrees and let it go and hit this plunger and then measure how much blood came out or liquid. Follow me? Okay. So, when the 2x4 came with no weight, it just pushed about that much. So they brought the 2x4 back up here, and they had more and more weight until it got 30 pounds. 30 pounds now. And they let it go. And it came down and hit here, 30 pounds. Pulling like that, still didn't empty. So they, tell you, they put two bowling balls on the stick. And they lifted it way up like this, and it came down, and wham, it moved out enough blood that comes out of the heart every less than one second. Imagine that, but the pressure.
sure must be to get the blood out. Okay, so then less than one second, we've got to bring this 2 by 4 back up here and let it go again. And here it goes, boom. And then less than one second, we've got to bring it back up. Jeez, now that doesn't make any sense at all. It's as hard as it comes. It can't. And no amount of pressure, more than 60 pounds, is going to put that blood out. So it's being sucked out, not being pushed out. Okay, so I'm here to tell you what I've found that uh, is indications that uh, this may be true. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to read is from Pfeiffer. Um, and this is from his Heart Lectures. I have to have a copy of this, but not the real book. But uh, anyway, what I, want you to, what I want you to hear is this. Uh, if, uh, uh, so if we have scientists, anthroposophy, scientists, <coughs> Um, one feels that one wants to study the human heart as an organ. There, a bridge is being built between man's physical body and spiritual entity. <coughs> and he says, Rudolf was willing to tell more regarding the utilization of the heart as a dual purpose organ, both physically and spiritually. The heart is not a pressure pump, but an organ in which etheric space is created. Okay, so, you know, we need evidence on this. 